You are the creator of your reality. And that's the truth. Mm. All of you are fully aware of the fact that you have the potential to graduate before you leave this body this time. You know that. All right. If you don't quite finish it all and have a few finishing touches, your next incarnation will not be pain and struggle at all. It will be in the Garden of Eden. So you won't mind it at all. Yeah. Some of you will never return to this planet after this incarnation. Now, when you're looking at compassionate faces that look non-human, that brings up our galactic family. It's interesting how mankind resists anything that it's not familiar with. You know, in prehistoric times and tribal villages, the tribes thought they were the only group that lived on the planet. Then as they ventured out, they'd discover another tribe. And sometimes they would say that tribe doesn't exist because they had never seen it before. And when they reach the boundaries of their continent, they think the ocean is the end of the world. Don't go out there, you'll fall off the world. It's very natural for human beings to believe, as they did in Galileo's time, that they are the center of the universe, that the earth is the center of the universe. But shockingly, new discoveries always show up. There's a new world. Wow, we could get to the new world. Right? Well, you all know we're not alone in the universe. We're about to discover on a mass basis that we have friends and family who've been hanging out here for thousands of years, seen only by a few, who are about to reunite themselves with humanity. Any Star Trek fans? You know the Prime Directive? The Prime Directive prevents the Star Trek Federation from interfering with any life on any planet if that planet has not yet achieved warp drive. That's the Star Trek interpretation. It's a very true thing. The prime directive exists. Free will is what societies and individuals use to progress. So our galactic family is not allowed to interfere until we reach a certain level of evolution. Tell seeing them is not going to scare us to death. Seeing them is not going to make us want to be dependent on them or whatever. But they've been here. They are here. It is time for them to reveal themselves. Nobody knew about orbs until we got digital cameras. Now digital cameras, since they cover infrared light range, show orbs, which film cameras did not. So orbs are not shocking anybody. They're souls. They're just other folks hanging out here. And there's one in my left ear. The galactic family is, I mean, you were just returning to your family is all you were doing. Where do you live when you're not in a body? Where were you hanging out just before you were born? Somewhere. I say if you weren't terrestrial, you must have been extraterrestrial. That doesn't mean you were affiliated with any particular star or galaxy or anything. You're just non-terrestrial, just non-Earth. Okay? 
There is nothing in any universe that is not alive. There is no such thing as an inanimate object. The chair you are sitting on is alive. Every molecule in it is under intelligent direction, vibrating, maintaining a certain temperature, doing what <coughs> molecules do, obviously extremely energetic moving quickly. Everything is alive. Nothing is not alive. The universe is made of energy. Energy is God. Everything is alive. Everything has a some level of awareness. So it just makes sense. And now science, of course, you know, science is part of the revelation. For the last, whatever, since the Hubble telescope went up, they've been searching for other planets which could sustain life. They have found a few thousand. They have extrapolated that to the number of billions of galaxies in our universe, each, billions of, each galaxy containing billions of stars. And they say there are billions of planets which could sustain life have oxygen, water, stuff that we have here. So it makes sense, right? How did we get to planet Earth? Did we evolve from the ape? If we did, how'd the ape get here? Right? How'd we get to the new world? In ships. How'd we get to planet Earth? In ships. Hmm. Well, if you look at all the different cultures and societies on planet Earth, are they friendly? Some are, some aren't, some are this, some are that, you know. What I've been shown is what I wrote, No Time for Karma, 20 years ago. It's been downloaded over a million copies off my website in 20 years. Long time, but. And in that I wrote about the Federation, the Federation of Civilizations, Extraterrestrial Civilizations. 20 years ago, it was a little early to write about that. Got a little flack, got a little feedback. People thought I was a little bit crazy. You know, they don't think that anymore. All the Gallup polls and all that say 75% of the American population believes that uh, UFOs are real. And 50% of them believe that they're walking among, among us. So it's not a secret anymore what's going on. I just watched the Citizens Hearing on Disclosure. Did anybody see that? The archives are still available. Held at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. Six former congressmen and women held a panel for five days on UFOs. Fourteen nations have already, re fourteen governments have released their files on UFOs. They're trying to get the United States to release their files on UFOs. But the stories they were telling are just mind-boggling to most people and are corroborated by thousands and thousands of witnesses. But the ones I liked the best were related to military personnel, one after another, testifying over the years since the atomic bomb was first created about how UFOs would be sighted at missile sites, nuclear missile sites, and the missiles would go offline. 
And it happened every time there was a crisis between the Soviet Union and the United States, which might have caused somebody to push a button. Offline. Push all the buttons you want, nothing is going to launch. Military people, these were everybody from PFCs and sergeants and master sergeants all the way up through colonels testifying. My missile site went offline. 12 people, 14 people saw the UFOs just before it went offline. They've been here preventing us from destroying ourselves since we created nuclear weapons. They told me long ago, we will not let a, a nuclear war happen. That does not just affect planet Earth, that affects the solar system and the galaxy. We will not let that happen. It's good to have friends in high places. So there are some civilizations that are mischievous, some that are a little off base, whatever you want. But what I refer to as the Federation is a group of more than 25 different galactic civilizations who work together to ensure that our civilization and some others survive, continue to be a useful place for people to do earth school and to grow and to graduate complete, unbelievable amount of help that we have, an amazing amount of help that we have. And now it's public knowledge, National Press Club. <laughs> That's pretty good, right? So when you see weird faces and things like that, it's just part of your family. It's just family members, you know. I've actually felt uh, I was doing Reiki on a person one time, and um, I actually felt felt like a lobster claw, you know, felt like a claw on my on my arm. And she just kind of she said, "What was that?" And I said, and I pulled my hand, arm away quickly because it startled me. And she said, "What is that standing in the corner over there?" And I said, "Well, what is it?" She goes, "Well, it really looks like a big cricket or something." And uh, I said. Oh, I don't know, but I think it's friendly. I, d I don't believe that it's going to hurt us. They're friendly, yeah. yeah. But they're, you know, imagine you don't have a body like this, and we're going to go down there where they have bodies. What body should we take on? We've got to look like something when we're down there. So they take on all kinds of things. But you have the intuition. You have the ability to say friendly, not friendly. I want to connect with them. I think I don't want to connect with them. The unfriendlies are no longer allowed on our planet because so many people have asked for help. So, yeah, there are some unfriendly civilizations out there, what we would call unfriendly, just because they're not spiritually evolved. But the spiritually evolved ones seem to be, have a federation which says, you guys stay over there, we're taking care of this planet. So very nice, very nice. Just doesn't make sense that we'd be the only civilization in billions of galaxies and probably billions of universes. Everything is alive. We eventually have to consider everything to be our family. The rocks, the bricks, the trees, it's all family. Now you've all been reading each other. Anybody need to be read anymore? <laughs> you learned something by working in a group that you come from different perspectives. The fact that this person talks about this and this person talks about something else, another aspect of you, doesn't mean either one of them is wrong or either one of them is right. They're just different. Okay? So when I say something, it's just different. I had, years ago, I used to have a Friday night group.
group that met at my house and we'd do some channeling and we'd do different things and readings and one guy decided he didn't need to come anymore and his wife said, why? He says, well, I'm trying to, I keep asking him questions about my business and all he wants to talk about is my life purpose, my life path, my spiritual growth. And I don't care about that. I want to know about how to make money. So he stopped coming. So I don't tend to talk about how you're going to make money. <laughs> I see people with a lot of money, but I don't tend to talk about that sort of thing. Okay, so Caroline, first word that came in my mind was magic. You are magic. You've gone through relationships with children, maybe nieces and nephews, I don't know, some younger people. You felt you were important in their life and you were more important in their life than you can possibly imagine that you were. And you did everything. I get clamped. <laughs> you did everything perfect. You love to judge yourself like all human beings, but you did everything with the young people perfectly. And you you will be rewarded. Nancy, joy, joy is the first word, delight. Don't let yourself experience it as much as you would like to. There's something in there about worthiness, about ought to's and shoulds and that sort of thing. But it is your destiny. Joy is your destiny. Not only is it your destiny, but three years, four years, five years down the road from now, you will be one of the greatest teachers of joy the planet has ever known. Joy is your destiny. Whew. I may not get through this. You guys. <laughs> Say again. Sue. Sue. spent a lot of your life hiding, not being too visible, not letting people know who you really were, because you knew who you really were, and that was a little frightening to you, and you knew it would be frightening to them. The planet is not used to having angels walk in bodies on the planet. You have been a member of the angelic realm. You are a member of the angelic realm. You are a healer. If you stop trying to heal, you will be a better healer. Fantastic healer. You came to demonstrate the potential for humanity. The potential for humanity. All I, only advice I can give you is relax and let it happen. Relax and let it happen. You know who you are completely. You don't always admit it to yourself or acknowledge it within yourself, but you know. You're home. Hmm. <laughs> Sometimes I see past lives. <laughs> Sometimes I see past lives. Paula the Great. You were not called Paula the Great, but you were called something the Great. You have been an administrator on the highest physical levels. You have been the head of countries. You've been the head of governments. You know you have the ability to manage any organization, anything. You can just take over and run the show you know that you are an unlimited being. It frustrates you when other people can't see their own potential. It frustrates you greatly. Yeah, but you have to be patient with people. Be patient. 
Don't give them a second chance. Give them a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth chance, okay? Be patient. It will increase your comfort level greatly. Okay? Yeah. Blessings. Perfect name. Mm -hmm. The sadness that dwells within you is merely a misunderstanding. You have had lives in which you connected with the infinite. You didn't think you were quite complete. You thought, I'll come back and finish the show. And to not feel at home makes you so sad. That sadness is not needed at all. It's, you can just drop that because in this physical life you will experience being at home again. Okay? It is your destiny. It is your destiny. It is your destiny to feel at home, to be at home, to know home, to merge with pure, total, unlimited love, to feel enraptured, to feel arms around you. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Don't need the sadness. Mm. Doesn't hurt anything, but you don't need it. Teresa. Hmm. Well, I think you knew that you and I have known each other for many, many, many lifetimes when you first saw me. <laughs> you wanted to crawl inside. I believe I promised you many lifetimes ago I would make sure you got home. This promise is still good. I think we go home together. Cool. Thanks. I love the company of angels. Oh, it's nice. <clears throat> Thank you. And you, I would not have made it through this life alive without. <laughs> I can't talk about her. I really get the clamp. And she does not like me to tell stories about her. She has done miraculous healings on me at least three times. It's not her, of course. It's what comes through her. <laughs> Some of you know what it's like to want to go home, you know. I've tried a few times. She won't let me go home yet. <laughs> anyway, she taught me what healing is all about. It's not about doing anything or being anything. It's about opening the door to the flow from the infinite. Hmm, Linda. Oh, another one that's finished. 
Ah, you know it all. <laughs> yeah, I've been told that. <laughs> you got it. You know how good God is. You know how good the universe is. You know it let, lets nobody fail. You got it all. You worry about the details, though. The, the details don't matter. <laughs> Who cares about the details? If I get to go home, do I care if it's on the train, a plane, or a bus? I don't care. I just want to go home. You got it. <laughs> uh, okay. Hmm. Nobody in this whole world has ever been as demanding of you or as hard on you as you have been. You need to give yourself credit. You are an awakened being and you like to pretend you are not sometimes. You need to give yourself credit I'm going to ask before we leave that every person here walk by you and tell you who you are and you are to believe them. Give yourself credit for being the divine being you are. absolutely divine being that you are. Yeah. So, you all got your task before you leave? You walk by and tell her who she is. Hmm. Oh, another one. You all should be friends. You know who you are. You know what's going on inside of you. You know what your remaining chores are before you graduate. You know who you are to uplift and heal and love. And that's all that's left in your life to get home. You know who they are. Love them unconditionally and that gets you home gets you home, okay? Done all the work. You did 18 bazillion lifetimes of fighting your way along. Finally, that's all done, nothing left to do except say, I'm home. Cool. Good. Um, thank you for the healing. Hmm. I don't quite get it. What are you waiting for? Hmm. It's not making sense. You could have gone home a long time ago. Oh. There are some people that you will not leave until you are sure they are safe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Your work's done. It's all over. You're finished. You're one of those people who's arrived at the place where you get to tell the universe, I'm ready to go or I want to stay. Nothing mandatory in your life at all. You just, you just let them know, hey, I'm ready to go or I'm going to hang out and help them or whatever. It's all your choice. All your choice. You say the word and you're out of here. You say the word and you get to stay.
Okay? Good show. Well done. That's what your guides are saying to you right now. Oh. You're getting a standing ovation. from the angelic realm. Look at Bob. He's Is hiding, no one safe? Hiding behind the camera. <laughs> He's hiding behind the camera. Right. Doesn't want anybody to know who he really is. But you can tell him who he is too on your way up. Yeah. That'd be good. We have a nickname for him which you can use when you talk to him. We call him Skippy. Skippy. I wasn't supposed to say that, but call him Skippy. Yeah. Cool. It's fun to do the journey together. Thanks for being a part of our life. I love awakened souls.